Um, as she mentioned, we started practice uh, the middle of last week. We've got, I believe, three in already. Um, we'll go on the floor here in a couple hours again. So um, I, I've liked the approach of this group from the beginning, from when we even started last spring. Uh, and then added all the newcomers through the summer for eight weeks and then uh, picked up where we left off when we started school back uh, about a month ago. So um, really uh, excited to see how they can come together, uh, a group that I think has a lot of very good individual pieces, but obviously new faces that haven't spent a lot of time in a Badger uniform um, and uh, looking forward to seeing how everything comes together. But we're very obviously very early in the that process and the stage of, of coming together be the best team we can be. So questions, Jess? Yeah, we have Evan flood up first and then Abby is second in line. So Evan, question? Hey coach, uh, Marcus Ilver, obviously a really unique situation. I, I don't think you ever got to watch him live. If I remember correctly, uh, all the evaluations were done online because of the pandemic. What did you think you were getting when you brought him here and how is that matched up with what you've actually got so far? Well, I, you're right, Evan, it was done all virtually um, watching film, the same thing with uh, Jacoby Neath and the same thing with Chris Vogt. Uh, the first time I'd met all three of those guys was when they showed up here uh, the middle of June for summer school. So uh, in Marcus's case, you know, somebody that we thought um, showed a pretty high basketball IQ. I knew his international competition and what he had done in Estonia would probably give him a, you know, some advantage. Uh, obviously he had spent two years in the States at two different prep schools prior to getting here. And really I think for where we thought he was um, to what we've seen here in June, July and, and into the fall, he's ahead of where we thought. Um, we've really been impressed with him. Um, you know, he, he's bigger than I thought he, what he looked on film um, and I think his skill level. And I think the one thing is just all the international experience he's had has been uh, advantageous for him. Um, and he obviously he's figuring out like all the newcomers, the specifically defensively, um, you know, how we play and uh, developing some of those instincts, but uh, been really happy with him so far. Question from Abby. Coach, how have you seen some of the newer guys or new guys on the team? How have you seen them respond to practice? How, what are you seeing from them that you like? And just these past couple like days observations. Well, they're all very eager. You know, they were excited to get to last Thursday when that meant that all the preseason off season uh, things that they had gone through uh, were behind them and they get to get to go at what they want to do and that's preparing to play games um you know the effort level has been tremendous i think the the chemistry is really good and that's always growing um but i i really like just their effort their competitive level they go at it each day um but yet yeah, off the floor i see them and you know they travel in in packs they're in groups all the time so i think you know there's there's the makings or the beginnings uh, of a pretty good team and again we're so early in terms of uh, putting that all together. Um, and we're literally taking it step by step. There's been a lot of drill work in these first three days, uh, a lot of defensive stuff being done so far, and we'll progress as we go through the next few weeks in, in adding layers to it. But uh, just, just their effort and, and their energy that they've come with every day has been the most impressive thing. And, and now it's a matter of you know, having that all come to fruition with uh, you know, what we can become as a team as we figure out who's going to get the minutes and how many and and uh you know that'll that'll surface over the next the coming weeks and and even months i believe he said jonathan uh, davis just what's the yeah. biggest difference oh, in him yeah. now versus last year based on everything uh the biggest the biggest difference steve i don't know if you can hear me but your question did you get broken up quite a bit um i, I think the biggest thing was his experience with usa basketball um what that did for him over the summer, I thought it would have a very positive impact in terms of just growing his confidence. And then he was able to make the team and, and obviously go play in Latvia. Uh, that's the biggest thing I've noticed. Obviously he's physically gotten better and you have a year of college basketball experience. I think that pays dividends as you uh, approach year two, but the, uh, the experience this summer and the confidence that he's gained from, from the time with the USA team, I think has been very noticeable. 
So, uh, you know, he'll be one of our marquee guys. Um, but the, just noting on that from when he, he was with us for about three or four days in June before he left to go to TCU for the tryouts. And then when he came back in late July, um, it, it was like a, not that he wasn't a good player before, but you could just see how uh, his mentality had grown and, and how his confidence had grown. So it had a very positive impact on him. We have a question from Evan Flood. Um, in the queue is an Abby and then Zach, just for reference for everyone. So Evan. Coach, you guys obviously have a, a lot of voids to fill from players leaving after last season. One of those at the point guard spot, a, a lot of hype around Chucky and maybe what he can bring to you guys in year one. I know you guys got a lot of preseason stuff to still get through, but how can he maybe step in right away um, and, and play that position for you that I know as a coach, you know, you, you're, you're very hard on and expect a lot from. Yeah, he's, you know, much like being a quarterback in football, being a point guard in basketball is, is not an easy task uh, specifically for a freshman because he's has to digest a lot of information, but Chucky's handled it very well. Um, you know, I, I, I want to temper expectations a little bit because he's a freshman, but uh, he has approached every day wanting to learn. Um, he's, he's been very uh, eager to continue to improve and get better. And we've obviously liked what we've seen so far. And same thing with Lauren Bowman, I thought really took a jump from the June, July time, August to when we came back together in September, uh, physically had really transformed his body in a positive way. And, and obviously Jacoby has played some at that position too, but, uh, specifically about Chucky, um, really have been impressed with what we've seen so far, but obviously we're early and uh, I know there's going to be growing pains. Um, there's going to be things that he'll experience that, that he hasn't had before. So, um, but excited about what he can bring and, and how he can help this team. We have a question from Abby. Hello again. Um, who are some of the early stands at standouts in practice? Like who have you been impressed by um, just right off the bat? Well, I, I think I could name a, a lot, Abby, um, and that's either been through what I've seen in the weight room. You know, we've only had three really official days on the floor. Um, I think in terms of the transfers, Jacoby has has hit the ground running pretty well. I think Chris Vogt has done some good things. Um, you know, the three returners that played a lot for us last year, Brad, Tyler, and, and Johnny, obviously stand out. Um, Stephen Crowell. Uh, has has really improved and obviously the freshmen um, I think everybody's asked about those two guys Marcus and, and Chucky are two that uh, you know have definitely hit the ground running so to speak but I you know everybody has their days so you know that's one thing that I keep in mind is that who look good on Saturday may be totally different uh, today and as they go through the office or the preseason here that's going to change from day to day because um, the, the growing and the learning and the installing of things and the teaching is, you know, at, uh, at a base level right now. So there's going to be, there's going to be growing pains with everybody just because of the newness of, of all this to, to the majority of the roster. Zach said he has his question answered. So we will go to Steve with another question. Steve, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm just, you're not the only team that goes through this, but with all the turnover across college basketball, when you're turning over your roster as much as you are this off season, how challenging is it to kind of develop cohesiveness and what do you do during the off season to kind of develop that? So you don't spend the whole non-conference portion of the schedule kind of adapting to one another. Yeah, I think the biggest advantage this year, Steve, is that we had an off season, uh, unlike a year ago where we were not, uh, even at this point in time, we were separated somewhat. Uh, we didn't have the summer. So, you know, I, I felt with the returners um, last spring, we started to, to put some of that together. And then, like I mentioned, when we had uh, everybody show up in June and be here for that eight weeks, you know, that started it in the process. And, you know, it happens. Team chemistry is organic. You, you can't force it. You can provide opportunities uh, for it to grow. But but there's also so many things that that take place and transform it away from here, away from the coal center. So it's the time they spend together in their apartments, their dorm rooms, uh, 
doing whatever around campus. Uh, I know they've been a group that's gotten together for different activities and going out to dinner and those things just to continue to to grow that. And again, it's going to take time. You know, we're still learning each other's game uh, on the floor, but I think I've seen that continue to evolve from when we first got together back in mid-June to where it is now. And now as we get more specific, um, this summer obviously was a lot of skill development and, and mostly offense. I did more defense this past summer than I'd ever have just because I didn't want this time of year to be the first time they'd heard a lot of the languaging and the definitions of things and, and some of the um, absolutes that we have to our system. Um, so I think that's helped um, that they've, but it's going to take time. And, and I know the only way we're going to get to where we want to get to is, is attack every day and, uh, you know, try to continue to improve and, and uh, grow, grow as we go through the preseason. Okay, we have a question from Evan. Just touching on Lauren again, how much did that year off maybe set him back? Um, you know, what are, what are some of the biggest hurdles he's going to have to overcome not being around your team for, for that freshman year? Obviously, he gets that back, but um, and then how's he just doing overall as well? Uh, I think I'll ask, answer the first part of your question or second part of your question first, Evan. I think the the thing that's made me the happiest is seeing him happy here every day and, and here every day coming in with a smile on his face. And, but at the same time, knowing, you know, from the time he played his last game until when he'll will play our first one this year, it's 20 months. And the majority of that time he has been removed from a team setting. So just for what he has personally had to overcome and, and go through, um, you know, I'm just happy to have him back here. And like I mentioned earlier, I've seen a big progression in him physically uh, from June and July until when he came back in September. And I think that just getting back here helped him kind of realize, you know, number one, it put him at ease. But uh, we talk about all the time. It's, it's a marathon, not a sprint uh, for everybody and specifically for him. And we're just going to continue to take it one day at a time and and help him, you know, be in the best position he can be on and off the floor. So I really liked his approach. He, he's definitely, uh, like I said, the jump he made from from the summer to the fall physically was noticeable um, and admirable for him. So um, right now we're just taking it day by day. And and like all the newcomers, uh, this is all his first uh, lap around the track and these drills. He wasn't here at this point in time a year ago. So. Um, we're trying to treat it as such and, and be very patient with him. Okay, we have two questions left, just one from Raul Vasquez first, and then Abby, and then we will wrap up Coach Guard's time. Raul? Hey, Coach, just wanted to ask you, uh, you've, used, you've been used to having a experienced guys on your team, and you mentioned a little bit with the defensive language you're trying to introduce into the new guys. What's it been like in terms of preseason and the first few practices? What have What's the difference with the having newer guys and what you've been having to introduce with the preseason practices? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, Raul, is that it's not instinctual for younger guys yet, and we're newer guys. And, you know, we have maybe on paper, or when you look at us at first glance, you say, all right, they're not very experienced, but we've just got more guys. We have some experience, but they haven't had a lot in a badge uniform. Obviously, I mentioned Brad and Johnny and and uh, Tyler, but Jacoby and Chris have played a, quite a bit of college basketball. Um, you know, Chris and, or uh, Steven and Ben have been here. Uh, Jordan Davis has been here, so they understand it. But I think the biggest thing is they understand it when you ask them about it, but it's the, the rapid fire that happens within practice when we're in drills or when we go live that what we want to accomplish and how we want to play certain situations and what our, maybe our rules are of our system aren't instinctual yet. So that's just gonna come through repetition. And, and we just gotta to continue to rep that a lot and uh, really do a very good job of teaching that along the way. So our staff has been very good at really breaking it down by the numbers and, and being patient with guys. But uh, the, I think the biggest thing, those instincts will happen over time. And, and that will, well, the only way I've ever seen guys continue to get better and grasp it wholly is to have a lot of reps and, and there's going to be, there's going to be miscues along the way. That's part of it. And then that's the best way to learn. And uh, like I said, I've just been very appreciative of how, 
how eager this group has been. Their their desire to be a really good team is very evident every day. Um, so there's only one way to continue to grow this, and that's to go to work here at 345 this afternoon and, and continue to work on what we started last week. And one final question from Abby. One of those marquee guys you keep mentioning is Tyler Wall. Have, how have you seen him step into a leadership role as you guys have started to get things rolling? Right. Well, I actually first noticed it last spring, Abby, when we went back into the weight room after after the postseason uh, with all the returners that were the guys that were coming back. His voice, uh, he started to really find his voice and own his voice at that point in time. And it's continued to grow. And everybody, the guys that we've had that have been upperclassmen leaders over the years, uh, all of them had le have led in different ways. None of them have led exactly like the past guy or anybody. Um, I always encourage guys to find their own voice. Don't worry about trying to copy somebody else. And I think Tyler has grown more and more comfortable in that position of um, having his own voice and, and understanding that it is his time and Johnny's time along with Brad to, to help this younger group grow, grow. And that's something he's wanted. He's really been excited for this time and uh, this opportunity to help lead these younger guys. So he's done a really good job with it so far, but as he learned really quickly, being a leader is not easy. And uh, I think he's, he's grown as he's gone through the last, you know, four or five months in that position. 